session kicks off today on Last Call. We'll talk about the new closed circuit surveillance cameras installed in Tampa for the convention. Joining me to talk about this is John Gales. He has a new website called RNCCTV. Welcome, John. Thank you. Why don't you tell us what the name is, why that name for the website and what people can find on the website there? Well, uh, as I was talking about before, these are CCTV cameras, which is closed circuit television. And so the name is a tie in with uh, the RNC and CCTV. And it's short, easy to remember, and type into your mobile phone. And the, the CCTV, closed circuit TV, there's cameras downtown, and you've, you've kind of mapped them out. You've made a map of where all these cameras are. Um, can you give us a description of if people are walking around downtown or driving and they're maybe keeping an eye out for these cameras, what they might look like? Yeah, so they're all over. There's about 60 of them, and they're pretty easy to spot because they, they utilize wireless technology, and they need to have fairly large line-of-sight antennas. So the easiest way to spot them is to actually look for the antenna, and they're pretty much exclusively on utility poles or, in at least the downtown area, stoplights. So if you see a stoplight with uh, on the corner a four or five foot tall uh, protrusion with a couple of white plates on top, it's a good chance that that's one of the wireless antennas, and then the camera will be on the light pole, typically over the intersection. You'll see a little black bubble, and it'll have a you know, clear glass dome underneath, and that's the camera. 813-239-9663 if you'd like to talk about surveillance during the Republican Convention, surveillance in Tampa. Uh, the, these were purchased from, uh, from the grant that the city of Tampa got for, for security for the Republican National Convention. The, the whole total of the grant was $50 million. Do you remember how much the c cameras part was? Just a, a little bit over $2 million, so a, a fairly small slice, but about 4%, I guess. And part of that is the contract, I guess, for the monitoring of it or the um, software, the interaction for it. And then after the convention, the, it's like a lease, is that right? Or did they purchase the cameras? The cameras were purchased. The, there's the Aware Digital is the contractor, and they're kind of known for doing this sort of thing. They did like the last Super Bowl and that sort of thing. They're out of Miami. But uh, they, they have the service contract for during the RNC. Afterwards, it's kind of unknown. They, they aren't going to be you know, around here forever, obviously, but included in that $2 million was the installation, the actual purchase of the hardware, and then on-site support uh, during the RNC. So they have to have people there and you know, who know what they're doing and how to use the cameras during the convention. Afterwards, they're going to go away, but the city owns the cameras. The people are going to go, um, the support is going to go away, but the cameras will stay. And that's a debate that the Tampa City Council said they'll have, I think, this fall sometime, is they're going to um, say, what, what do we do? We have this hardware, we own these cameras, and what do we as a community want to do with these cameras? Do we want to leave them up? Do we want to move them to different parts of the city? Do we want to continue to uh, have the support? Um, as a re someone who works in Tampa, and I presume lives in Tampa, What's your, what are your thoughts about what the city should do after the convention with these cameras? I would, I would prefer that they go away. It's my, you know, I walk to work every day. I live downtown, I walk downtown, and I pass multiple cameras every day. I can see one of them from my bedroom. So if I can see it, you know, it can see me, and they talk about how powerful the zoom lenses are and stuff. So, you know, I, I would rather, if, the, if there's a great need for it during the convention, as soon as the convention's over, that they go away. But you know that wasn't really what the campaign was about. The, the website was about it was more just about the awareness because a lot of my neighbors didn't know they existed at all. So they, it really got bought, as you said, with that federal money. It didn't come out of the local budget, and there wasn't that discussion that there normally would be with you know a significant expense. So it kind of snuck in with all the other stuff they were getting, all the equipment, communication equipment, and the uniforms and whatnot, and it wasn't really talked about. So. If they're going to stay for a while, we definitely need to have that community discussion. Yeah, and it would be an, an, an expense because they would need the support. They would need to continue to pay for the support if, if they were to keep them. Right, and there's even 60 cameras is a lot to watch and record. So if something happens, you know, if your city has those cameras out there and something happens, obviously attorneys are going to want to see what happened on those cameras, and they're going to have to go through the footage. And it's just a lot of data every day to record 24 hours a day in high definition. All right, well, we're going to go into the phones now. Now, if you have a comment or a question or if you'd like to know more about the surveillance or if you would like to tell us your two cents, please call us at 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. Zebulon, you're on the air. What's your comment or question? Thank you. 
All right, thanks for that comment, Zebulon. Uh, John, do you feel like um, responding to that? If I was a betting man, I'd have to probably also agree that they're not going to go away. It, it, it's $2 million worth of equipment that the city you know, got for free from, from the feds. They're probably not going to give back the communications equipment and the uniforms and the you know, armored personnel care that they purchased as well. Uh, as for using it selectively, that's one of the problems with the pan, tilt, zoom cameras because these cameras can be focused in anywhere in a 360 degree range and they have a very long zoom so it could be the case that they they weren't watching a certain area even though it was right by a camera they, they can move and they do move so and they can be zoomed in on something very far away so that's one of the tough parts of you know did they actually catch this it's hard to say and everything is being recorded and saved and so um, I guess there would be a way to go back and look at all the footage and make sure that, that something wasn't there, if they said it wasn't there, although it's kind of hard to prove a negative. True, and that can definitely happen, but right now they're not even admitting where they are. So it's a whole other step before they'll let somebody dig through the footage. You know, they haven't, you know, request for, request for comment comes in, they won't tell you where the cameras are. So it seems that they also wouldn't give you the footage for the cameras that they won't tell you where they are. You can figure out where they are just by the footage. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. Let's go now to James in Clearwater. Hi, James. All right, thank you, James. Well, Tampa could definitely have the uh, the world's best webcams if they uh, open these up for other people to watch. Do you know if that would require the same level of support as they have now, would, if, if they were just to use it for something kind of passive like a webcam? I don't know the specifics of their system. Uh, most likely not. I mean, the, the expenses here are in the archiving right. and kind of monitoring because if there are cameras, somebody, the public at least expects somebody is on the other end of them. In, uh, in this case, a lot of it is software watching it, so they have software that automatically detects anything that's abnormal from the cameras, but for a webcam situation, it's just you know a, a flat image that isn't archived. What do you know about that? How does, a, how does software detect something that's abnormal? Give us an example. Well, in, uh, in software terms, that they motion track, so they'll track objects in the frame, and it's a high-definition image, so they'll have the ability to track uh, the RFP requested at least 300 objects simultaneously in a single frame. They also have the capability to be able to track objects across cameras, so if you switch from one view to the other view. And then abnormalities, um, it really depends on the software package, but you know a lot of movement would be an abnormality, so you know, like a, a mob type situation, if there's a lot of you know sudden movement, that would be an abnormal situation. If there was all of a sudden a lot more objects in one frame, you know, so if it went from five people to all of a sudden 100 people, that's an abnormal behavior. One possibility, I don't know what the market would be, but one possibility if the city decided it didn't want to keep the cameras is potentially, I guess, it could sell them to another city or something that was in the market for, for cameras. Um, whether or not used surveillance cameras, there's a 
great market for it or who knows? Well, the, the nice part is the cameras themselves are actually in some fairly high-tech housings, so they should be in perfect condition because the, the housing keeps out uh, rain, it keeps out, you know, any, uh, it actually even has fans, so they keep them cool. So inside the housings, the housings may not have the same value, but the cameras themselves should be in, you know, they've only been up for a couple months, so they should be pretty much in brand new shape. And they're very expensive cameras. They're, you know, 2500 three grand a piece. If you'd like to join this conversation, the number to call is 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. My guest today is John Gales. He has a new website called rnctv.com, and it's, uh, it's a, a map and more information about all the surveillance cameras for the Republican Convention in the city of Tampa. And we'd like to go now to... James in Tampa. Hi, James. You're on the air. So James, James, um, a point taken about the red light cameras. Um, that we're talking about something that's a little bit, of course, related. But um, these, I don't think these ca these cameras in downtown Tampa will have um, this explicit purpose of nabbing red light runners. I, I think that's a completely different situation. Yeah. Yeah, I think. James, thanks for that call. And um, th of course, the city of Tampa didn't pay for these cameras because they're going to get reimbursed from the federal government. Now, whether you know it's still taxpayer money that's going to pay for them, and they, I think they did try to find um, some used cameras, but no one was, no one would respond to that request. Um, they actually also had a, a more ambitious original plan. I don't know if you read about that. Tell, tell us what that original plan was. They uh, is earlier on in the process, but they knew they were getting this federal money, and, and the original plan for the cameras, they were bidding out uh, what it would cost to have the ones that they have now, but in addition to stuff like the overhead drones and uh, actually helmet-based cameras to put on like the bike cops or horse cops or something, just, you know, almost out of a video game type of, you know, the special forces, like, they found out drones are very expensive, and these wireless helmet cams are very expensive, and then they settled with the system that they have now. Yeah, so that's an interesting thing that people could weigh in on out there. And if you're out there listening and you have an opinion about, um, you know, whether it might have been good or, or it's good that it didn't happen that we had surveillance drones and helmet cams on the bicycle police. Jim in St. Pete, you're on the air. What would you like to ask? Thank you. 
was born again as a simple man and he loved his life. And uh, he shared down the security forces in the end. So uh, that's something we have to watch for. And I, I thank you for paying He's ready to see it as a man. All right, thanks for that. Thank you for that call, Jim. And um, we're going to go back to the phones in just a second, but I want to read this email. If you'd like to email us, it's dj at wmnf.org. You're listening to Last Call. It's 5.50 in the afternoon, and my name is Sean Canan. I'm your host every Wednesday. Tomorrow night, Mitch Perry will be the host of Last Call at 5 o'clock. And our emailer, John, says, by using the app from the um, Google Earth, you can compare the concentrations of the cameras to see where the most intense surveillance will be the area around Likes Gaslight Park is utterly blanketed. And John's referring to the, the application that John Gales has developed, and it's you can find that at rnccTV.com, and you can see the map right there, so you can take a look at what how much of downtown Tampa is covered. Let's go now to John in St. Petersburg. Hi, John. John, you're on the air? Oh, sorry about that. You're on now. All right, uh, I think we are having some phone issues, so we'll try to get that fixed for you. But in the meantime, if you'd like to email us, you can email your questions or comments to dj at wmnf.org. My guest is John Gales, and he has created the website rnccctv.com. And I want to ask you um, that if, if people find one that's not listed on your map, what can they do? Well, definitely uh, notate where it is, the intersection and the direction and you can take a picture even if it's if it's easy and there's a contact form on there so if you go to rnccTV.com you can click on contact and that'll go to me and uh, I will go check it out and if it if it checks out I will put it on the map and everybody will be automatically updated the next time that they load the application and you mentioned that you can see one from your bedroom I pres I mean maybe I'm making an assumption here but a lot of people who live in downtown live in high-rises is it are you above the the altitude level of the camera and can they point upward they can't point too much upwards because they're, they're, most of the cameras are actually positioned below, and so they have like the open glass dome is, uh, they can do up to, you know, the, as high as they are, and they're normally about two stories up. Some cameras, there's one in channel side that has a little bit more movement than that, and some of them in uh, Curtis Dixon are, are put up a little bit higher. But uh, the one I'm speaking of is on the Laurel Bridge, the Laurel Street Bridge, and it's actually about at eye level. I'm on the second floor and I can look across and it's about my height. So I can definitely imagine what they can see. Because if I can see it, you know, they definitely can see me and I don't have a 20 times zoom. Yeah, what made you get interested in this? What's, why is this, uh, is this something that you, this project you took on? Uh, I'm always walking around the neighborhood, so I walk to work and I always take pictures if I see a building open or if I see some construction being done. And uh, I like to rep the neighborhood. I'm a big, big fan of the neighborhood. And I saw one of the cameras going up on, uh, I believe it was Zach and Franklin. And it was on a Saturday. I was in the office getting some work done and, and going to the store just to get some lunch. And I saw a cherry picker up there with the contractor kind of working on the cameras. As a tech guy, I was interested in kind of the tech he was installing, what the network was, what the kind of cameras they were. And uh, so I took a, took a picture after looking there for a few minutes. And he just scowled at me and uh, and yelled and for whatever reason the contractors that installed these each had a TPD car next to the cherry picker with its lights flash and the guy was just doing paperwork and I had thought that was strange but then he tried to get the police officer's attention to uh, to come take my memory card he said you can't take photos he's yelling at me you know he's 20 feet above me and so I'm a little uh, non-confrontational when it comes to the law enforcement type so I moved on and then uh, as on my way back from getting a snack, I uh, saw him from the other side of the street, and he spotted me, and uh, I took another picture after he yelled at me. He spotted me first. He called me a piece of trash. And 